Welcome to the Maddie Rocks Experience in the Instagram Live Sessions. Uh, I am your host, Maddie Rocks. I am back after uh, a long-awaited hiatus. Back in 2021, this is my first interview back on the Instagram channel. Um, took a little hiatus in uh, 2020 and uh, decided to come back and uh, start the interviews up again in 2021. Uh, tonight, I'm going to welcome um, uh, a special guest, uh, Canadian rock singer and uh, songwriter, guitarist, uh, Sabrina Falla. She is coming on right now. Sabrina. Hi. How are you? I'm good. How are you? The long-awaited Maddie Rocks interview. Yeah, I know, right? And I, you know, I just want to say, first of all, Happy New Year. Oh yeah, Happy New Year to you. And I want to thank you for being patient with me as I transitioned out of my hiatus back into my interview status. So yeah, I know fine. that we've been working on it for a while, but I want yeah. to thank you for sticking with me. Okay. Yeah. All right. Um, <laughs> so how are you during uh, this? crazy time that we're in this pandemic uh what what were some of your big events or some of your highlights in 2020 that you could at least say that you captured you know that, that were I, positive that that were positive well yeah. i have to say 2020 was my mainstream radio year because okay. i was on mainstream radio for a whole year so that that's good I kept on getting accepted on mainstream. I did virtual concerts, which I'm not used to because I'm used to going on stage and performing in front of people. But this is what everybody's doing. So it's, I'm getting used to it. I'm still not – it's just, it's not me doing it on the video, but I have to do it now till everything is safe for all of us to go back out. And we have and, to adapt to change, right? Yeah. Right on. And um, I, I don't know. It's just so much going on. So much. Yeah. What is, what is one thing that you realized about yourself during this time, during this pandemic, during this quarantine, that maybe you never realized about yourself ever before? Oh, that's a good question. Um, well, I never thought I could be stuck in my home for so many hours. <laughs> Um, figuring out what to do. What I've been doing a lot that I normally don't always do is watch a lot of movies because I like because I, I I don't know what to do a, a lot of the time. Like I do write songs, but there's time other times where it's like, what do I do now? I'm so used to going out, going shopping, seeing people. Now I'm just like, okay, I'll just watch horror movies for 24 hours. And I'm a, I'm a horror movie fan. So I just right love watching those kind of movies, yeah. What's your favorite horror movie? Oh, well, I think the recent one I, I liked was Phil. Well, if you like torture movies and gore, you'll like that one. Okay. <laughs> I'll have to put it on the list. Okay. Well, oh, yeah. I, there's plenty of those kind of movies. Yeah. So give us an update on the current situation where you're at um, in, in, in Ottawa. Canada and uh, and uh, give us uh, you know tell us what's going on currently with COVID in in your area. Well, uh, the one thing I'm surprised about we got back into lockdown of, about a week ago because we we have the new UK virus that kind of got here. Oh. I don't know how it came here. I'm still trying to figure that out. <laughs> but yeah, uh, we're. we're Ottawa and Ontario was supposed to have it for two weeks lockdown. But now that that virus came, it's going to be an extra two weeks. And honestly, the only places that are closed are the malls and the restaurants, the grocery stores, the doctors for virtual and, and the pharmacies are open because you need to get your, your medication. But like, Maybe some coffee shops are open, but not the ones in the mall area. Okay. But yeah, but the malls were open during Christmas, but they closed it right right after for the lockdown. 
Right now, we're we've uh, down here in in Minnesota. We've kind of gone back and forth. We were just ending a kind of a stay at home order by the governor. Um, he's now releasing things back to us on Monday to where we can go out in public and you know congregate in restaurants and and uh, in other areas. So that's going to be nice to get out and at least go to a restaurant. You know. Yeah, I was doing that, and actually, the restaurants had a. Uh tables separated they, they, they didn't have screens but they just like separated it everybody wearing masks it was so comfortable walking into a restaurant i didn't even know the masks were on because we, we were seated so apart from each other which was nice right on yeah so would you say you've transitioned into 2021 good mm-hmm. off to a good start so for for me 2021 is good but I just hope the lockdown doesn't last six months like it did last year. Right. Yeah. Let's hope <laughs> but not. I don't know. They're, they say there's this new vaccine. Um, let's see how that goes. Right on. All right, Sabrina, let's, uh, I, I want you to take uh, Maddie Rock's listeners back to the early years of your life in, yeah. uh, in Ottawa, Ontario, Canada. And I want you to, to give us an insight to how music came into your life. Okay. Well, that's an interesting question because I feel I was born into it. Uh, Before I could speak, I would be humming tunes. And then when I was in school, I would write poetry and short stories, which then led me to thinking, if I can do that, I'm sure I can write a song. And then I used to write songs before I could play an instrument. I would have the, the melody in my mind. And then I started learning the piano at age 10. And then at 15 or 16, I grabbed my first guitar. And then, but, be, but before I grabbed my first guitar, at 14, I won my, my first singing competition, which led me to want to eventually grab an instrument so I can accompany myself. But I just went into music straight on. I had other interests, but music was always first on the list. So it wasn't a family member. It wasn't anyone like that who who you kind of looked up to and you just did it yourself. Well, my, my cousin would always play guitar around me, but I was, I guess he got me into the guitar playing, but, he, and he was always telling me, if you get into music, do it cause you love it because you want it, you know, because that's the only way you can actually succeed. You have to feel passionate about it, especially in this business. It's tough. So you really have to want it to, Absolutely. To, 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 to be in this business. So I, I do it because I'm passionate. I'm not doing it because somebody's telling me to do it. Right now. Right yeah. On. You know, my youngest daughter uh, at 13, uh, oh. you know, she asked for a guitar for Christmas and nice. uh, an acoustic guitar. She didn't want an electric acoustic. She wanted no. just an electric or I'm sorry, an acoustic guitar. And uh, I thought, you know, she did good on the ukulele. And uh, uh, she's got it in. I, oh yeah, <laughs> I want to learn the ukulele. Yeah, she did. Uh, she did very well on that. So I thought, you know, I think she'll transition very well to the to the acoustic guitar. And if she, she has, can play the ukulele, she'll be okay on the guitar. I'm sure. Yep, yeah, she played. Uh, God, I can't remember the name of the song. Um, Goo Goo Dolls. It was a Goo Goo Doll song. Goo Goo Dolls. And, okay. And she just she just learned it on her own. Nice. Oh, so she does she play by, by ear? Yeah. She does. Me too, me too. She does. Me a lot too. of my family plays by ear. So. Yeah. It's so hard when somebody puts sheet music in front of me. I'm like, just let me hear the music. I'll play it. Right, right. <laughs> so, Sabrina, talk about some of the earlier influences in your life musically who have helped shape and make you the artist that you are today. Okay, so from the beginning, I was listening to Simple Plan, Avril Lavigne, Evanescence. Michelle Branch was the first one. I just fell in love with her. Wow. And then slowly I got into Green Day, Bon Jovi, Billy Idol. Green Day is the one that's like, as you can see behind me. (laughs) Green Day. I see that. (laughs) Uh, They are the ones that got me. To where I am so they're like my idol my inspiration my everything but Bon Jovi and Billy Idol I've seen them live I, I saw Billy Idol and he's good he's good live my god 
but yeah, I've seen them all live. <laughs> I yeah, he's on my interview list, and I've I've made it a couple attempts to interview him, but I've never never gotten the never gotten it. So, Aww. hopefully one day. Yeah, just be positive. A anything can happen. Absolutely. So you right when you named off a lot of those different artists, you're talking about a couple different. You know, you're talking genre jumps. Okay. Yeah, because so how I did you yeah. how did you how did you derive at rock? Because when I was young, I didn't have the raspy voice or the edge. I had soft voice. So I would sing songs that suited me. So then I had to get a vocal coach and he would tell me how to sing certain words to sound like rock. And I had to build my rasp by singing songs with rasp. And then I built it. Uh, Brian Adams did the same thing. If you hear his earlier work, mm -hmm. it's so clean <laughs> compared to what he has. He did the Absolutely. same thing. A lot of the rasp are, is built in by doing a lot of vocal work. And then it sticks there naturally. Right on. Well, you sound great. <laughs> Thank you. Um, you got discovered uh, pretty recent, within the last few years. Yeah, and 2018. Yeah. 18. And the way that you got discovered was very <laughs> unique and not the typical way that people get discovered now, I know this, and I'm going to have you talk about it, but, you know, I would have loved to have logged into this platform and, you know, <laughs> someone discovered me. It's not ever happened. But Aww. talk about that platform and, and how it all came to be for you. Well, LinkedIn. Um, LinkedIn. LinkedIn. So I had for during, during 2018, I haven't been on my LinkedIn account for about a year. Because I just said, there's no point. There's nothing on LinkedIn. So one night, I, I remember it was 1030 at night. And I got on and I'm like, I'm just going to check to see if there's any emails. Because, you know, I've never been on it for so long. I was lucky that I got on that, that night. Because there was somebody interested and gave me some uh, names of labels to contact. And I'm like, wow. And that was during the point of my life where I was really suffering because I'm like, I'm trying so hard and I've, 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 I've wanted to give up, but I just never did. I just kept going. And that kind of like, it's, it's like God is saying, wait a second, open this email, you know? So, yeah. And then, so I contacted Dance Plant Records and then we spoke and then in a few months, they said, would you like to sign with us? And I'm like, yeah, we're talking for so long right now. Yeah, so yeah, LinkedIn, um, I'm really happy to whoever told me to get LinkedIn because I never thought LinkedIn would be the place where I would have gotten discovered because everybody gets to discover it on YouTube or on TikTok or on some kind of those live other social media accounts but LinkedIn I don't even know how he found me but I never asked him how he found me because sometimes it's good to leave things mysterious yeah just leave it at that don't go into the details because there's a reason for everything absolutely well maybe we'll post this interview on LinkedIn and maybe something <laughs> will happen with Maddie Rice. I don't know you know what I'll do that why not <laughs> so out of that experience I mean you got signed with a label and then you broke into mainstream radio. Took a year. Took a year. Uh, I, I, got, uh, I got signed in January 2019. And then November 2019, I got my first mainstream break. And from that day, wow. So how does the mainstream radio work, Sabrina? Is that, is that, is that all legwork from you? Is that your label? Is that, I mean... Both. You're all over the place. You're you're on this station, that station, in this country, in that country, and <laughs> uh, is, is that both. you? It's both sides. Um, I, my label all still tells me be, because I'm used to doing so much on my own that they told me not to stop doing the work by myself. So as they're doing it, I'm doing it too because I I can approach the mainstream on my own now. Because I have a label, I just say I have a label, and I'm on these stations, and they go for it. And I've had mainstream interviews, which is very different. It's, it's, it's like 15 minutes, and you have to talk and do things short and to the mm -hmm. point, and you have to follow certain rules, and you can't swear, you can't say certain things. You, 
I can't promote certain things. Mm -hmm. It's different, but it, it's nice. It's nice. Yeah, I think all their airtime is accounted for and all their bits and pieces, it's, it's all accounted for. Mm -hmm. They only give you a certain amount of time to do it. Yeah. Well, what a great opportunity and some, some very blessed things that have happened with you from, from that opportunity, for sure. Okay. Um, you have had the opportunity to work with uh, many different uh, producers in the industry that have pretty uh, extensive resumes in the music industry. Right. First off, how did you get connected with all of these different people? Well, Stuart Epps in England, I worked with Elton John, Oasis, Twisted Sister. I, when I was in college, I had a producer's class, and he called in for one of the producers mm -hmm. in the producer's class on Skype and asked certain questions. He saw me on the video. I kept raising my hand with every question he was asking. He spotted me. He talked to me in front of 40 people in the class. I was shy. I was nervous. And in front of all those people, he asked for my email. Wow. <laughs> yeah. So I kind of, I got out, out of my class telling my, my dad, I just got Stuart F's email. <laughs> so, yeah. So that was my little, little first break I got. Early 20s I got. And then uh, Chris Burkett, um, Toronto, a songwriters association club that I was in for songwriting I couldn't find the place so I met this guy on the street just so happens to be going there and I was telling him I'm looking for a producer and he knew Chris and he gave me Chris immediately so I was just lucky I met him right there and Kent Wells um, I got known online I was looking for songwriters and I met somebody that connected me with Kent and yes, Dolly Parton. I was singing in front of her microphone. Wow. <laughs> yeah. It's just in this industry, you just have to be at the right place at the right time and just believe and all these things happen and I didn't even expect it. It, it was just there and I had to grab it. Right on. Which out of those names, and I'm sure there's a couple more, uh, but who out of all of that group, who's been the most in influential and and best to work with Ooh, that uh that's gonna be hard to answer because every producer let okay all i can say is they they didn't like change me they let they always asked me what's the sound i was looking for i sent them the the bands i liked they they gave me what i wanted the only thing I didn't want was auto-tune. And when I was with Kent, he said, now is the rule, there's auto-tune. There's going to be auto-tune in your music, but it's going to be so small that, that they're not going to hear it. Because I told him, if I sound robotic, I'm not going to like it, you know? But um, honestly, Kent taught me a lot. Like, he taught me not to be scared, um, to push my, my, my vocals as far as it can go. It's not, it's, it's not going to be, be, be strainful. Uh, Chris, the same thing. All, all my producers made me comfortable before I sang in the studio. And, and in England, uh, they gave me tea and food. <laughs> I tried to speak the, with their accent. They were all nice to me. And, um, but I would work with them all again. But, um, um, I'm just glad that they let me have creativity as well. Absolutely. That's and, huge. And, and the, and the whole production. And, uh, another, another thing in Nashville, I, I, I co-wrote 10 songs and I had to choose five. One of my songs, Kent didn't really think was good because the demo that somebody else sang because I lost my voice one night, <laughs> I sang so much that I couldn't do it, did not do it justice. But I told Kent, my voice is back. Can I sing it for you? Because I love that song. It's my song didn't last. It almost didn't make the cut. And I sang it. And he's like, okay, it's a keeper. Right on. In Nashville, I did have a bit of like, I had to prove to, 
to because he Ken is is gonna record a song that he feels is good to record un, under his name because he 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 does a lot of big bands in Nashville. So um, having to fight for that song, and I won. I'm really happy. <laughs> good for you. Yeah. Good for you. Um, you have two album releases under your belt now. Um, what or how have those releases been for you? How, what have they done for you? Um, they got me on mainstream radio. Um, they were so well produced by well-known producers that it, it actually got me on mainstream. Like I never thought I would get on mainstream because I know how hard it was. Even my label said, even some of the major artists don't get on mainstream. Like you, you don't know, some of them are just touring. They're not even on the radio. Right. I, I, I am so like, I pray every day. I'm just so happy to say that all my songs have been played on mainstream. That's awesome. At, at least once. Some of them are in rotation, but I can say all of them have been at least once on mainstream. And I'm like, wow. <laughs> I'm still in shock by the mainstream to this day. Like, it, it happened a bit too fast once it got picked up and went on. And I'm just so happy. I, I just hope my, my, one of my songs hits one day, but it's going to happen when it's time. Right on. Yeah. And, and you remember Maddie Rocks. Oh, I'm, I'm coming back. I'm coming okay, back. Yeah. Right. Because <laughs> we, <'cause> we'll <laughs> talk again. Yeah. We'll talk again. Um, where do the ideas and inspirations come from? Um, where do you pull them from that create these songs that you create? Life. What others go through, what I go through. I, I like to help people with my music. Like my song Heard is about uh, a situation in my life that I had to walk away from a friend. And I know how hard it is to walk away from a friend you've known for so long, mm -hmm. especially a best friend. Um, so... I just want people to know that it's hard, but sometimes you need to l let go of things. So, yeah, I, I try to write songs that people can also relate to as well. Absolutely. Absolutely. What's coming up for you musically next? Hopefully I, I can get in the studio first. <laughs> I am writing, but getting into the studio is just like, I was going to go last year. But then the pandemic happened and it ruined everything, completely everything. But I'm not, I'm not the, the only one it ruined. It, it, it ruined a lot of people's uh, uh, studio time. And yeah, I, well, I, I don't have a home studio. I go to a studio, so I, I have to make sure they are uh, okay with me going into their studio for it. You know, it's safety, safety precaution. Absolutely. And I truly believe that the music industry is going to come back bigger and better uh, than it's ever been. Oh, and they're once, going to rebound once, from this. A, once a, everything is okay. Oh my God. The festivals are, uh, I'm going to, Oh my God. The festivals are going to be packed. It's going to be great. Absolutely. Yeah. I, I uh, can't wait. I want you to talk about uh, the musicians that back you. Now, I don't know if Sabrina has a band of her own that actually back you, but some of the musicians that actually play on your music, are those session musicians? They are. Uh, they are. Uh, Chris Burkett, the songs I did with him, he plays them himself. Okay. He doesn't use um, fake drums or pre-recorded instruments. He plays them live himself because I, I want it to sound real. Um, uh, but Stewart, he, he actually took different, uh, uh, band members from different bands to make a band for me. Actually, my drummer on my first EP was from a metal band. So it gave the perfect sound I wanted for my first EP. And for my uh, Kiss is a Killer EP, my drummer was Kelly Clarkson's tour drummer. Wow. I know. When I met him, I'm like, I love Kelly Clarkson. This is so cool. Very yeah, nice. I love Kelly Clarkson. She's great. See, that's the, the cool thing about the music industry is you 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 bump in all these different people, you network, and 
you know it's yeah. then, then you're all connected and, and and they and they know how to do it so fast like they're not wasting time like you just yeah. give it to them and they track it i'm like they just heard it once wow this is great this is fast because you know it's it, it's money so they have to yes. do it fast so i can get in and start recording as well but it was great they were fun and then at the end in nashville we took pictures and i met them but I'm in Nashville. I'm, I'm, I met so many wonderful people, and they were so nice. Yeah, I, I love Nashville. I've, I've been there a few times. I would love to get back there. Yeah, so. it, yeah, it's beautiful there. Sabrina, in past interviews of female musicians, um, there have been conversations about struggles with being a female in the industry. Yes. Um, have you ever experienced struggles in the industry for being a female and what was that and if so what was that situation and how'd you handle it well i'm not going to mention the name of the no, producer but no, i'm not going to but uh, i actually forgot his name anyway <laughs> there is a reason for that i don't want to remember that person but i was told that i could not be a rock singer um I, I would be better as a pop singer. Anybody would, would be good as a pop singer, okay? It's so easy to sing pop. But the thing about me is I can sing pop, but I want to be me. I want to be who I want to be. And I had to walk away from that producer because he didn't believe in me. He said, just be pop. If I really wanted to do pop and I did, did it, what if? it would have been the opposite. I might have never gotten the airplay. Who knows? Who knows? And, and even if I did it, I wouldn't have enjoyed it anyway because it's not me. Um, also being a rock singer, a female rock singer, I've had people tell me females cannot sing rock. Excuse me, Joan Jett, Pat Benatar, Mel Melissa Etheridge, the cranberries. Mm -hmm. Don't come and tell me I can't sing rock. Like, um, um, also being a female in the industry, you, uh, females get more hate than male. For some reason, I'm finding out that the people are liking the male bands more and more than the females. I don't know why, but us girls can do a lot. You, girls, you girls can rock. We, we can rock and we can do things in life that maybe men can't do. Like, Absolutely. like, actually, anybody can do anything when they put the, their mind to it, I, I think. Um, uh, <laughs> so I didn't take the pop route. I took the rock route. I stuck to my guns. I got to the label and I got on mainstream being a rock singer. They can go. I, I already punched them in the face for what they said. I showed them that I could do it. Good for you. And if they're watching me, they're probably like, man, she did it. Yeah, I did. Good for you. When people say you can't do something, show it to them that you can. It motivates you. Yeah, it does, actually. It does. It, at the beginning, it hurts. But after a while, you, you start to, re to realize, <clears throat> wait a second, I have to prove them wrong. Well, it's sad that we even have to have a topic like that, you know, in a comparison between men and women in the music industry. It's sad that that even comes up. I mean, I was told even by a male figure at one time that I would never make it with music interviews. And here I am. Jealousy. 11, 11 years later. Jealousy. I'm telling Absolutely. you, it's all, it's all jealousy. Um, Pat Benatar, I, I, I read this somewhere. Pat Benatar's wasn't going to get signed to a major because they said that her hair was too short and that she looked more like a, 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 a tomboy kind of rock singer. They wanted to make her a pop. So she, she went with another label. Joan Jett couldn't get signed because of the way she was. So she made her own label. Um, yeah. th there's always ways to, to succeed. You just have to figure it out and and the people who like you will follow you absolutely absolutely and most of the time people are just jealous that you're able to do something and they're still trying to figure themselves out pretty much so yeah, 
absolutely. Yeah. Um, Sabrina, what would you say is the key ingredient that's going to keep you going musically and creating all this great music that you've been doing for these last few years? Give me that one key ingredient. Being happy. It's important. That's a big part of the mixture. If you take yeah. that out, if you take that out, it's going to be bland. Mm -hmm. Good for you. Yeah. Right on. Um, out of your short musical career so far, okay? Yeah. Um, I want you to reflect back on these last couple of years. What would you say has been your biggest musical accomplishment? Okay, let's let's not talk about mainstream here. Let let's talk about something else that led me to that. Right. I think getting the opportunity to go to England with Stuart was my first break, and then after that, I'm like, maybe I have a chance in this industry. Uh, Stuart Epps that worked with Twisted Sister and Elton John, and he was talking about Elton John so much with me. He was unbelievable. Like I was in his studio, and I'm like, am I actually here? I was in college, classroom, and now I'm in here in a studio in England. And he was terrified while I was flying. He's like, I hate flying. Are you okay? I hate flying. Oh, my God. I hate flying. But as long as I get on, on the ground, I'll be fine. Right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um, what do you want the world to know about Sabrina Fala and your music? that maybe they don't already know about you? That I'm going through exactly what you're going through in life. We are we all suffering in, in similar ways. Maybe not the exact way, but something similar that is uh, relating to each other. We're, we're all right now, if you think about it, we're all on the same level playing field. Yeah. And, you know? and the one thing I'm not doing is writing about the COVID. Like a lot of the artists are doing. My label told me not to for reasons. And I, I, I'm, I, I agree. When, when it's over, I don't want a song to be still out there talking about the COVID. Right so that, that's the, I normally write about things that aren't so happy, but the, the COVID is something I cannot even write it on paper it's 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 too it's too sad mm -hmm. it's 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 not it's not right right to to sing about I, I don't think no um what does the future hold for you musically sabrina ah uh, i would love a world tour <laughs> uh, i i don't know what whatever comes i uh, think uh, things that come up to me every day surprising me anything can happen um Actually, uh, a mainstream station a week from today is going to be rotating me because they're in lockdown. They can't put me on the radio till they're back in the studio. So things are happening. Things are good so far. This year is going to be good for me, but I just really want the lockdown to be gone so everybody can ha have an enjoyable year. And especially in the summer, we want to go out. We want to have fun. Absolutely. <laughs> Oh, boy. There's my cats. They've come <laughs> out. Oh, boy. My kitties. Yay! I, they kitties! were sleeping. They were sleeping. And I thought, oh, great. I could get through this interview. Boy, that does. Well, I, I don't think you can't hear them, can you? I love cats. Oh. Well, if they come over here, I'll pick one up. They're 14, 13 weeks old. Uh, oh, they're babies. Yeah. And they're, they're raising havoc. Can I right have now. one? <laughs> <laughs> Actually, yeah. You know, I, you might be able to have both. <laughs> I didn't know if I was ready for this, and I still don't know if I. I still don't know oh, if I'm ready on. for this. They're adorable, aren't they? They are adorable. They are adorable. It's okay. Uh, Cats <laughs> can can join in all they want. <laughs> okay, all right. Um, Sabrina, where do you direct people who want to find out more information about you? What uh, What are all the socials? Where Where are you going to send those people? They can go to my website, sabrinafallow.com. Or to make it easier, just put Sabrina Fallow on Google, and it all comes up on the top. Uh, at Facebook, MySpace. I'm still on MySpace, by the way. Wow. <laughs> I know. I started on MySpace. So I have to keep my profile. MySpace, Twitter, Instagram. It's all Sabrina Fallow. TikTok and Snapchat is Sabrina underscore Fallow. 
or just contact me on Facebook and I'll let them know. Um, I love meeting new people, so they can contact me. I won't bite. <laughs> yeah, so that's great. <laughs> uh, I, uh, uh, I'm going to give you an opportunity, the same opportunity that I give every artist that I have the opportunity to sit one-on-one -on -one with, whether it's in person or virtual. And that's a message to Maddie Rock's listeners. And I want you to, to send a message to Maddie Rock's listeners, whatever it is you want to say. What would you like to say to them? Don't let anyone stop you from what you want to do in life. Just go for it and go with your gut and do what you love and never give up because you you can and will succeed if you work for it mm -hmm. just go go for it because uh impossible take the m makes it possible right on mm -hmm. sabrina thank you very much for taking the time out of your night i really again. enjoyed this by the way this was good. fun good and, and yeah. again I, I, i'm definitely coming back good oh yeah good yeah. Uh, this was an experience, and that's the Maddie Rocks experience. <laughs> with so, cats. Right, yeah. with, with cats, with <laughs> cats, and my dog who's sound asleep. Oh, um, I love but dogs. I, I should uh, – well, he won't, he won't come over here. I love animals. I do too. I do too. Um, but again, thank you for joining me, and uh, I look forward to having you back, and I wish you nothing but continued success in, in everything you. you've got going on musically in your musical arena. You've heard it Thank here, Batty Rocks listeners, Instagram live sessions with Sabrina Fella. Thanks again. Thank you. Maddie Rocks, out. <laughs> Thanks again, Sabrina. Bye. We'll talk soon. Yeah. I don't even know how to turn this off now. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't done this in a while. <laughs>